hands down. Insane build quality difference between you guys. Why is your side of the car like all fogged up? And whatever you do, don't draw like in the fog on the window, please. And why did you do a heart? That's okay. <laughs> now, Jason, you have a knack. A knack for taking things like way too far. Places that you don't want to go. Sitting over there drawing hearts on the window. It's all fogged up over there. I can put JR in the middle. <laughs> Seriously, I'm gonna I'm gonna take you out to Bonzel and just drop you off out here. There, there's a lot of bodies out there. No! Shut up! <laughs> no! So, I uh, got a call yesterday. Customer is like, hey, I'm looking at this truck. Can you go up and do a pre-purchase inspection for me? Shooting up to West Coast Exotics. It's up in Marietta, which is kind of northeast of San Diego. I'm gonna take a look at it do a full inspection on it the best we possibly can. Ideally, we want to have the truck in our shop until we got all of our tools, all of our equipment. We can throw it on a lift, check it out. Oh, That's wait, where'd the on. Hummer come from? Uh, so yeah, Hummer was actually a truck that we built, I think twice over now. It was originally silver, beautiful, beautiful truck. Customer kept it in like pristine condition. Like it, you open the doors and it smelled good. So. We'll see if it still smells as good as when David had it. But we haven't seen it for like five years now. Two owners ago, had it for three years, I think. And we did regular service work on it. And then the last owner had it for two years. He was up north, and so it didn't come down to our shop for service. Biggest thing is you wanna make sure these trucks have, have had their service work done on them. There wasn't any maintenance that was deferred. As soon as you start deferring maintenance and you're not keeping the truck dialed, it just goes downhill real quick. A couple hundred dollars to replace a ball joint now turns into three thousand, four thousand dollars of repair work on the whole front suspension, new tires because everything's kind of eating itself alive. So primarily checking that out, make sure it wasn't abused. Hey Ryan. Hey how Hunter, are you? how you doing, buddy? Good. Nice to see you. Yeah, you too, buddy. Here to check out nice the uh, H1. Yeah, yeah, can't wait to see it. But <laughs> uh, kind of want to see some of the other cars too. Okay. Dude, this is my dream car right here. Yeah, we love these. MSO Club Sport titanium roll bar, the Senna seats. Wow. Black pack. What's the price on this one? 550? It's in the 600. See how I lowballed them? That's a good way to start. Did you take Amex? <laughs> yeah, we take Amex. All right, cool. From you, no problem. I've got to say, like, hands down, insane build quality difference between you guys awesome. and the competition. Awesome. Not Thank to, you. If you look at the details of all your rhino lining and stuff yeah, over yeah, time yeah. and just how well you guys do everything yeah. in the hardware that you guys use, a lot of times I'll see rusty hardware, I'll yep. see bubbling rhino lining on different little pieces, trim that people didn't care as much yeah it's the care that like that we love it's gonna have our name on it yeah for years to come so this was done probably six six years ago and you can oh, you see know why. the coloration there and that's a factory issue they're plastic and they fade i think we all recommend you to do ppis on these yeah yeah yeah, yeah. being that you guys built it I well mean, it covers you too i mean it's just little things that you guys do that separate yeah. you from the competition yeah thank and you and make Thanks. it easy to sell the exclusivity it's the build quality and yep. it's also the resale value Predator Hummers just do so well whenever it comes to resale because people know the name. They yeah. can trust it. They know what they're getting. They mm. know that you developed and, and built a system that works. You're going to do your full inspection on everything, but I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised. Yeah, this yeah. thing looks like whenever I first took it in on trade almost five years ago before That's we sold it to Johnny. I like Hunter trying to sell Ryan on his own truck. No, seriously. I'm sold. I'll take one. There, there's not one statement that I said that's not true. To be able to take these pins out and to put them back in, if you own a Hummer, do that and send me a video. Good yeah. luck. It doesn't work like that. You have to, you're doing this little hold thing. Or, and you're, or leaning on it. Yeah, exactly. Trying to, exactly. to yeah, line yeah, them up. Yeah. You can't do it like that. No. So no. I'll let you guys do your thing. Okay, cool. Let me Thanks, know. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate it. Thank you. Starting the inspection here. First thing that I do is I just walk up to the truck, take a look at it, kind of get an idea of what I'm looking at. Um, this truck's been very well taken care of, so I'm not going to find much, but I do see one thing. Very common failure on the H1. Factory springs, they start to collapse over time. 
very normal. I'm not concerned at all as far as it being an issue on the truck. Get that replaced and that's gonna fix the camber, get alignment on it. See this difference right here, that gap versus this gap? and I suspect it probably started to collapse over the last year or so. On the back here, we're missing one plug. The reason why we have these holes is for a tire carrier. That one's just missing one, really easy to fix. We did not install this because we don't install the winch controller up here. We actually submount it inside. That'd be an easy swap over. When we build up the bumpers, we disassemble all this. That would be a concern if another shop did that without us doing it, because we know it's done right. It's not a big concern, I just don't like it right there. Tires seem good, does need alignment. Check the roof up here. Rain gutters look good. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Let's pop open the hood. This is something that a lot of customers don't know. We actually have a built-in stop on here. So what you do is when you pull the the pin out, you have a secondary hole up here. You drop that pin right in there and that stops the brush guard out. Nice little feature we built into that. So this also has our hood lift support, just one finger lifting it up. Somebody came in here after us and did some performance upgrades. So they have a dual CP3 pump here. It's just a little tight, but there's really no issues with it. The hood rod here is broken. Very, very common. People forget that there's a, a lock on these hoods and they just try to open it and eventually snap this off. Air intake system, we don't utilize that. We have, we use a factory RAM system up here. A little bit different, nothing really wrong with it at all. Had some upgrades on the performance side of things. Let me crawl underneath the truck really quick. A little kind of seepage out of the transmission, but it's not an active leak. Here's a front door, opens and closes, pretty much lines up perfectly up on the top. This side's dropping down. The hinges over time start to break down. I'd replace just both of these hinges. All right, onto the back. Uh, back in here, it, if this collects water, back along the roof where the roof lines up with the body. If it collects water down in here, it'll rust it out. So you really want to check where that roof meets. And you can see down here, this thing's, this track is perfect shape. A little dusty, but perfect shape there. So yeah, I'm so far, I'm good with this truck. I think uh, we just need to go for a test drive now. I think my wife wants that McLaren 765 though. That'd be a nice surprise for her. She's gonna love it. It looks like half a Ferrari, half a Lamborghini, and if there was never a Ferrari or a Lamborghini, it'd look insane. It's not their design. When it was when it was parked over there, I think there's a hair bit of uh, uh, toe in, and so when it backed up, it kind of squatted the front end. But when we when you pulled it out, it, the springs look good to me. Okay, perfect. What's that knocking? Uh, hood snubbers. Uh, oh. So very common failure on the H1 are those little rubber isolators up here. Oh yeah. Walking. That's what I'm saying. Walking. It literally is just spinning. I know, it's <laughs> fucking crazy. It comes, so yeah, it's, it's very subtle at first, and then it just like, it loads up and it goes, it starts dumping power. Yeah. You really need to know how to drive this vehicle. 
have some experience behind this vehicle. That's what I was saying with him. I'm like, map two yeah. is kind of your map. Like, you don't need to go out of map two. Yeah. It's five different maps, like on a toggle switch. So it's it's analog and you can feel each click. It's super cool. What's the horsepower on map five? Map five is a thousand horsepower. A thousand horsepower or two thousand pound foot of torque. Let's put it at map five. I think I want to live to, uh, <laughs> to see the light of day. <laughs> Is you like a kid in a candy store right now? Yeah. <laughs> Without any money for the candy. <laughs> a sheepy race, twin turbo, fur on. Yeah, I've seen this thing before. Oh, you yeah? have? Yeah. I forget who. I love how you're it. downplaying. Oh, I've seen this thing before. No, I've seen. Still I mean. <laughs> yes, I guess so, huh? <laughs> So how are you, Eric? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing amazing. Love yeah. the new facility. Thank you. Thank you. Lots That's of amazing. hard work, but uh, yeah. it's all paid off. Yeah, this place came out great. I mean, a couple of years worth of work, as you know. Couple, but, yeah, uh, I mean, I remember when you first started, where you right. stored your cars. Right. To first warehouse. Now what yeah. it is today, it's like insane. four or five thousand square feet, yeah. and let's add another building, and let's add another building, and long story short, we ended up with four buildings on the street. And, I finally said, okay, enough is enough. We need to build a build a proper facility. This was a bit extreme going to 75,000 square feet. What's great about it is I got all the suites in the back, service, detail, photo booth, VIP, and then a 35,000 square foot showroom. We could put a hundred cars on display. So it was a lot of hard work, but it, you know, it's worth it. You know, West Coast Exotic Cars has taken off last couple of years. A lot of hard effort, but, uh, but worth it in the end. I think everybody's happy and excited when they walk in this place. Oh, yeah, polish the floors, you get you know, good inventory. I like the floors. They look really good. We just polished the original floors. Yeah. And really brought them back. Yeah, we get our little, you know, ride along uh, floor cleaner and we do a couple laps oh, every right. week. Yeah, it's all good. You got a, a mini Oh, yeah, yeah. It's great. <laughs> yeah. He jumps on it and just does laps in here and cleans it right up. Come on, let's get you on the Zamboni. Eric. Right. Let's see you do some laps right <laughs> It doesn't now. go fast enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> it adds some power to it. <laughs> so, Eric is a professional race car driver. I know. Or was. Yeah. Or yeah. Still I, re are, I retired. Or Last okay. couple of years. So you can see there's another dozen or so racing suits. You know, I raced for almost 30 years. We won the championship in 2016 and 18 in IMSA. Wow. One thing that I really remember a number of years back at Road America is uh, Dane Cameron and I driving together. We were in the Wheeling Corvette Daytona prototype at the time, 2016, and had a big win. Three lane at Road America. You got to win both Road America back-to-back -back seasons. So really exciting. Exciting race, exciting place to to, uh, to win, of course. Can I tell you, as a race fan, this was a race that they should talk about for a long time to come. And then we won Pete, Petit Le Mans, we won Sebring 12 hours, so wow. had a great career, had uh, you know contracts with GM and Cadillac and Chevrolet. And, That's awesome. Yeah, it was super it's fun. It's got to be so it. fun to, to be at that level. It's a lot of pressure to just kind of keep up the pace and you know and, and stay as quick and as sharp as you can but super fun i mean winning championship at that level and yeah, winning yeah. those big races is awesome now i'm 47 it's like look at i can't do it forever yeah of course so this is part of where west coast exotic cars comes in is i'm not gonna get paid to race cars forever for sure what point when do i switch over yeah. and do something else it's like i gotta stay in the car world that's all i know is cars yeah. Part of it was was COVID, honestly, okay. in 2020 when things, you know, racing was put on halt and, you know, uh, series were stopping and didn't know what to do. I just said, hey, look, and I'm going to focus more on business. Yeah, you know, sure. I did this for a long time. You keep racing for as long as you think you can. If you can do it into your 50s, great. My thought process was always, hey, I don't want to keep racing and racing until I'm not as quick anymore. Sure. I'd rather say, hey, I won two world championships in IMSA and I won Petit Le Mans and all these big races. Yeah. I'm going to step away now. Maybe I'll do a few races here or there mm -hmm. and then just focus on business. So yeah. that's kind of the business owner to business owner. Yeah. You're always looking at what's happening in the future, kind of mm -hmm. coming up with the game plan. There's yeah. so many uncertainties right now. Yeah. What's your thought as far as the next year to two years out with right. yeah. seeing the used car market where it exploded beyond yeah. like any comprehension of, I'm sure what you thought no of doubt. would happen. Yeah. I didn't think it was going to happen at that level. Right. Um, and now you see this uh, like kind of retraction a little bit, yeah. but the economy's still there and it's still flowing. Right. Business is, is exploding still going, and right? still going. Yeah, it's a tricky time for sure. You know, last year was was really overinflated, like you mentioned, right? Sure. I mean, car prices were through the roof and 
MSRP meant nothing. For sure, we're seeing an adjustment. The real limited production classic type cars that they didn't make a lot of are still holding their value very strong. But the more mass produced cars, for sure, are coming back. Like even a Huracan, okay. right? Let's let's say a Lamborghini Huracan. Not necessarily mass produced, but in I our mean, world. In the supercar world, it is. Yeah, they, sure. they make quite a few of them. So, so you know, just a 2015 Huracan shot up to $250,000. So now, really, what we're seeing in the last you know, number of months now, is it coming back to where it was? Gotcha. It hasn't even gotten back down to where it was two years ago. Yeah. So everybody's saying, hey, look at the markets correcting, but it, it shot up so far that it hasn't even come back to where it was two years ago. And I don't even know you if know? it will though, because we kind of reset the bar at right. a lot higher rate. Yeah. You know, it's, it's coming back down a little bit. I don't think it's gonna- and You see that in the housing bad. market too, right? The housing market did the same thing. Sure. The housing market shot up like crazy. Completely right? unsustainable. Yeah, unbelievable. So now it's it's coming back, but it's still it's not going to go back to what it was two years ago. Sure. You know, with inflation and, and all the things happening. But again, in our business, like we're selling cars every day, and things yeah. are still moving. We've got a hundred and ten cars here now in inventory. Do we keep buying cars? Do we not yeah, buy yeah. cars? The nice thing in our world here is that you know we we're not committed to one brand. They always have to be performance cars sure. or a selection of cars for everybody. Yeah, diversification. Yeah. That's yeah. really what you're doing. Right. It's funny because I've talked to people yeah. too in the past where they're like, how are you still in business with this just one little niche brand? Uh, right. Like we diversify. Well, right. how do you diversify? Like, yeah. well, we do, you know, custom parts. We do full restoration builds. Yeah. We have all kinds of government contracting from weapon systems that we manufacture in-house to uh, tactical off-road training for SOCOM. From an outside perspective, it looks very niche and right. uh, yeah, small yeah. industry. You know, we'll do PPF in house. We'll do window tint oh, nice, in house. Nice, we're gonna start yeah. expanding into some more of that stuff as well. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, you just try to you know capture as much of the market as you can, right? I saw three kids come in, kind of like nervously looking around. And I was like, Hunter, do you get a lot of people coming in? He's like, Yeah, yeah, we love it because we're bringing in like the local community into our right. shop. Yeah. So that's pretty cool that you're kind of giving back to the community and bringing them Absolutely. in here and come on in, right? And we encourage people to bring their families. Like yesterday. We had a, a woman that brought her son by for 16th birthday. We mm -hmm. brought him for a ride in a Lamborghini. Oh, right? how so cool it was is a that? Big deal, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And it doesn't take a lot of time for us. You know, you know they're on their phones. You know they're Snapchatting and Instagram. And, yep. and West Coast Exotic Cars gets tagged. And hey, look, you get a little more exposure from it. They go home, they tell their dad, their dad tells their friends. It's just more sure. talk, right? It doesn't hurt in the slightest. So there's no sense discouraging anybody that comes yeah. in the door. In the back of my mind, you know, I was that kid. It was walking well, in sure. looking at cars, I was right? Too. So, I was so too. when they when, I, when they yeah. walk in here, these sixteen year old kids and they're looking at cars, like I was that kid. Uh -huh. So I have a direct relation to it that yeah. I never forget. Yeah. And you're yeah. doing something that you absolutely love. At yeah. the end of the day, it's it's still work, yeah. but you love what you're doing. That's right. One other side note, which is kind of really in direct relation with us. Who did you race for last? I raced for a wheel and engineering, one of the country's biggest emergency lighting manufacturers. Yeah, we're so, a wheel and dealer. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that. Sunny Wheeling. Um, the dad and George Whelan and um, the whole family is really close. Yeah. So they sponsor me for 15 years or oh, so. Oh, wow. Yeah. So oh. I'm really close to the family. Super people. Amazing business. Yeah. Big part of my racing career. Yeah. Um, and amazing product. Just, you know, just a good all-around yep. American-made company. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Definitely. We've yeah. done a lot of the installations on there with the Whelan stuff. And mm. you grab that thing and it's quality. Yeah, serious like stuff. Solid state stuff. I yeah. mean, just phenomenal. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's funny when you go there and you look and uh, they have like a warranty department that has lights that people send back from like 30 years ago. Oh, that wow. they're going back and they're fixing and sending back to the clients. No Unbelievable. Way. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's cool. Yeah. Well, I appreciate Here's it. Thank you so You're welcome. much. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. No problem. Honey, let's go. Let's go home. Here we go. You got work to do. I am. I'm hungry though. I'm hungry too. You get some like in and out or something?